Hello, everybody. This is Team 11. Our topic is black box adversarial attack. Uh, this is the basic outline of our presentation. First is the problem introduction. We introduce what problem we're trying to solve. And after that, baseline method of the paper to solve the problem and its limitations. Uh, then solution offered by us and improvements that we made to the paper and the code. At the end, we present the result and evaluation methods. Uh, so the problem is simple, devising a black box adversarial attack that is simple but effective across multiple domains. So let me briefly recap and explain what some of the terms we used mean. Adversarial attack is a machine learning technique that attempts to fool the model by supplying corrupted input. By inserting a small noise to the original input, which is undetectable to humans, a different output is produced by the network. Black box attack. As opposed to white box attack, where internal structure of the model is available for the attacker, black box attack is done without moving the internal structure of the model, where only output of the model can be utilized as a feedback. Now, what do we mean by simple and effective? Simple because we're using simple search-based algorithm that's easy to understand, and effectiveness is based on a high attack success rate, small number of queries, small distortion from uh, original input, and simultaneously fuzzy. Uh, why is adversarial attack is important? Adversarial inputs pose uh, security risks to AI-based software. Uh, generating and defending these tricky test uh, uh, cases help improving the safety of the software. Please note that black, a black box attack is the realistic setting in software engineering, since softwares usually don't disclose the internal network structure, but only release the API. Uh, our baseline method is deep search algorithm described in the paper, deep search a simple and effective black box attack for deep neural networks. I will very briefly remind you some basics of the paper, which we already explained in the detail in the presentation. So what we have here are the original image and the access to the classifier. The only information we are given to make the searching decisions would be the probability output of the classifier. And we want to slightly mutate the image to get the wrong output, but we don't want to query the model too many times and we want our adversarial input as similar as possible to the original one. And as the name already implies, we will use a searching method assisted with query reduction and difference reduction. Basically, uh, Deep Search aims to find the noise pattern for adversary, and it does by hill climbing its uh, method on each pixel RGB value. It takes a step forward and stays if the point is closer to the decision boundary, else it's moved backward. As you might imagine, the complexity is so big as we perform on each pixel value. Hierarchical grouping is introduced to reduce the query usage, utilizing the locality of the image to group adjacent pixels together. Then the algorithm uses iterative refinement to reduce distortion, simply narrowing down the distortion as long as the uh, input name is classified. Even though the paper did an excellent job, we have some uh, critical comment. The attack is somewhat benign in that uh, it only makes the facile image, but we have no control over which class the model miscla misclassified it into. It assumes the availability of uh, probability output, which is not always the case. Uh, in fact, most application in software engineering does not have the full probability information revealed to the user. The grouping also, sim uh, although simple, it creates square blocking artifacts, as you can see in the pictures, that looks really unnatural to human eyes. Uh, the paper is also all explore the image domain. For other domains which is not well studied, such as audio or NLP, it is unsure that the algorithm will work. Also, this might be subjective, but the code is rather hard to read. Now let's talk about our addition to the research. In our project, we first replicated the algorithm in our own way then added a few new features and experimented with them. And finally, tested if deep search is also effective in other domains. We re-implemented most of the parts, but we also disclosed that we borrowed a few codes from the original work for a good reason. Of course, we implemented the core of the algorithm, building up from mutation with grouping, image evaluation with the black box model, and the actual deep search algorithm, which is basically a hill climbing. For fair result comparison, we use the same models and data of the original research, and we improved based on the interface to accommodate our new features. We tried three new features on the research. First, the original research accepted any different class outputs as adversarial attack, but we implemented targeted attack so specified class of adverse results can be generated. Next, instead of using fully fledged 
probability output for every class, we implemented a way to convert category-only output to a scalable confidence value. This enables deep search to work on trickier situations. Lastly, to avoid very distinctive weird artifact of grouping, we tested out different grouping scheme rather than square grouping. In order to perform targeted attack, the original fitness of probability gap was replaced by the targeted classes probability and the aim to maximize the target's value. In categorical feedback attack, a new way to assess classification confidence was needed. The basic idea is to use statistics for this. We create a bunch of images with random noise and try evaluating them in the black box for category output. This will give us various outputs because of the disturbance added. The statistic data is processed for confidence assessment. This greatly increases the query count and reduces accuracy, but can still be useful setting for a realistic black box attack. For grouping, instead of using pattern of chunks and squares, we group randomly distributed grouping scheme. Lastly, for expanding to the audio, we converted the input into two-dimensional data with Fourier transform and performed deep search on the 2D data and inverse transformed it back to audio. Now we will present the results one by one, starting from the replication. These are the two data sets used in the original paper, Cypher and ImageNet. We also use them for our testing, but on a smaller sample size. As you can see from the table, success rate that we could achieve is comparable with the original work. However, ours performed slightly worse in terms of the average queries, except for the Cypher uh, undefended uh, defended case. You can see the artifacts in the original work in this above example from ImageNet. And here are multiple perturbed examples for the SciFAR dataset uh, with final and true labels uh, shown in this grid. For our first improvement, making targeted attacks, we have obtained the following results. It successfully attacked more than a half of images we used uh, from ImageNet and all from the SciFAR dataset. The target classes were airplane for the SciFAR uh, and street sign for ImageNet. Next, in our experiment with random grouping, we could actually get some impressive results. As we can see, the artifacts are greatly reduced and in terms of average number of queries, uh, while this approach doubles the number for ImageNet, it has almost the same number of queries for SciFAR dataset, as you can see from the table. Lastly, we, dealt, uh, we tested categorical attacks only with a SciFAR um, undefended non-targeted dataset, uh, which attacked successfully these three images, M150, that you can see in the slide. These are the results we got when testing deep search on audios. So we had collected data sets for five class classification. And here you can uh, hear the actual results. So this is the original. And this is the example. So it still sounds like a cat for us, but gets classified as a human. And uh, for our conclusion, uh, firstly, deep search is effective on targeted attack as well as audio domain. Uh, we also uh, noticed that spectrograms uh, are quite robust to noise. Secondly, random grouping has less artifacts, but it produces uh, uh, worse quality images. And lastly, categorical attacks are not uh, quite successful in uh, query usage. Uh, so here are our future work. In this work, we use spectrogram to represent sound, but there are actually much more representations such as uh, time series, spectrogram, scalagram, or MFCC, as you can see in the picture. Uh, this poses the next problem. Our implementation assumes that we know the model uses spectrogram to represent sound. Uh, it's not completely black box. So we would like to make it a uh, representation independent by one of the two ways using raw mutation directly on sound or back and forth implementation. From raw, we produce image, we mutate the image and we convert back to raw the feed to the model. So uh, that's it. Thank you for the attention. <laughs>